Hi, so this is Trigonometry for Beginners Part 2. So I made a realisation. I'm plotting out the sine of y in a graph form. So this is the sine of y over time. And you can see this has taken a few seconds. So this is like the x-axis. Same as the radius over here. And the amplitude is the sine of y, the y-axis. So if you've seen the video part one, trigonometry part one, which is also, you know, creating rotating dials, you need to watch it first, you'll understand this. When the radius of one is pointing to three o'clock, we have no amplitude. And as it starts to rise, the amplitude, a sign of Y increases. So I'll let this run through a few times so you can see it. Now I'm plotting pi, which is how this realization came about. I'm using pi, so 3.14, and when that gets to pi times two, and you'll see the counter down here, so pi times two, 6.28, it clears the screen and starts again. But see that's 6.279989. So I started programming a number to try and get this to show 6.28 and stop and all of a sudden I found myself chasing a decimal number just like pi chases the diameter in a circle so if you're not familiar with what I'm on about pi is an irrational number there's a Greek symbol for pi so we round it down to 3.14 decimal places here two decimal places 3.14 but on like Windows calculator and I didn't count them all 3.14159265358 and that's never ending it's irrational so that's the circumference as i said in part 1 that's a diameter now the greeks don't know how many thousands of years ago sussed that if you take the diameter lay it over the circumference you get 1 2 3 point one four of the diameter completes the circumference if you zoom in you'll still have a gap so instead of adding 3.14 oh, I've gone over my three here that should be 3.14 so if you add another place so they've got 3.141 is still not big enough, it still doesn't fill in that gap. If you made this a two, it's too much. So 3.141, so put a five in there. It's still not enough, there's still a gap. So then you, know, one, you go nines, two, six, five, three, five, eight, so on and so forth, and it never ends. You're always going to have a little gap. If you change this 3.14 to 3.15, that's it, it's already overlapped, so that's too much. So now going back to this, with me chasing this decimal number, let me quickly show you on the screen. So it's drawing the circle using pi, and you map the circle, that's pi divided by two, so 1.5 something, pi, 3.14, that's 180 degrees, two pi divided by three, so 4.7 something, and then two pi, 6.28. And you'll see as it maps out, we get the amplitude of y, the sine. This is the sine wave over time. So that's half of the sine, and that's one full cycle. So this is part of the program. I'll, again, like the last one, I'll put this in the link so you can download it. I've got, if the counter is greater than or equal to the width times 2.2, and that was too big, I've got more than one complete cycle of the sine wave. 
So then I put another two there and it still wasn't enough. So then I put a one, that wasn't enough. If I change this two to a three, that's it, I got more than one cycle, so it was too much. If I change this two there to a three, it was too much. So 2.214, if I change this four to a five, that's it's too much. So then I'll start you know, another decimal place and start with a one or a nine, and then that's too much. But then I've, I'm down to the limitations of the float in the 32-bit compiler and the floating point. So I've, I've just rounded off to here. And you saw on the screen, so we're not quite getting 6.28. And I thought, why can I not get 6.28? And that's because I'm using pi. And if we have a look at the value, I'm increasing that radius by value equals root of value, take away two times pi, so that's one complete circumference, two times pi divided by the width offset of the screen which is just to keep the circle over to the left, but two times pi. I've got pi as a double 3.14. So because it's 3.14, that's not accurate enough to give me one complete circle. If I round it up or down, then my sine wave is gonna be wrong. So I could add some more decimal places here, but all that would mean is I'd have to add more decimal places here. Now I could cheat and just plot it with yeah, the counter equals the sign. But I was, I was doing this, figuring, I thought, why am I chasing this decimal place? As I'm chasing this decimal place, because pi chases the diameter of a circle. And the diameter is not part of a circumference, because if it was, it would fit in there a number of times an equal number of times, you know, two, three, four, five, you wouldn't have to keep on splitting it. So my conclusion is the diameter cuts a circle in half or cuts a circumference in half, but is not part of the circumference. It's a bit like saying, so this pen actually, it's nearly the right diameter. Yeah, so this pen is equal to 3.14 of the circumference. But if, if I was able to bend this pen, put it around the outside, oh, actually it's not, it's 3.14 and a bit. That's because this circumference is not made up of this pen. But however, if I lay the pen in the middle, it cuts the circumference in half. Why you get so many decimal places in pi is because the diameter is not a constituent of a circumference or vice versa. The circumference is not made up of the diameter nor the radius. However, the radius is the diameter divided by two. When we're plotting a graph or using like that rotating gauge, we are using pi and the circumference and the y-axis of a circle and the x-axis of a circle. And from the video the other day, you see the x-axis has no amplitude. It just goes from one, which is one radius. And as we come up, the radius decreases, then we'll have one y. And then as we start going back, the radius, oh, yeah, the radius starts going negative. So we get negative one over here and the y-axis, the sign of y, that starts decreasing as we come round here. So back to, I've slowed this down a bit, so hopefully you can see, if there's a little pause when it gets to two pi, you can see, so I've been chasing this decimal number. So this is now counting uh, the, the sign of y, which has an amplitude in its normal state and the x, sine of x, has no amplitude at zero or two pi. So this is a sign, 6.279989. Couldn't get it right because pi is an irrational number. So because I'm trying to plot one cycle, my cycle has to be irrational. And that's what I found. I tried for over an hour to get this right. Just so I could say, look, there's two pi. 
and I couldn't get it. It's either too little or too much. So that's zero. Pi divided by two, and you can see the amplitude in maximum. Then the amplitude of sine y comes down to zero. Then it goes negative and comes back up to zero. So that's one complete cycle. Pi, two pi divided by three, and two pi. But is it so much easier when it's illustrated in a you know graphical form? That's a sign of x and y working and showing us exactly what you get. So look, we're down no amplitude, the negative, positive, just one whole circle. As you can see, we got pi here and then two pi here. So two pi, one complete cycle. And since I've been doing this, <laughs> I've never thought about it before. That's why a sine wave generator on a scope or signal generator, that's why it's called a sine wave generator and not a cosine of X generator because it's plotting the sine. So now doing this just to illustrate the sine of Y, I've now built a sine wave generator. And this is perfectly scaled to give me one cycle by the end of the screen. If I had a computer screen, I could show lots of cycles. But so now if we turn the X axis into a graph, we can still plot it. But you see where this starts plotting the sine of Y, then it comes down to nothing. At nothing, like three o'clock and nine o'clock, the radius is, well, this uh, cosine of x is at its maximum. So let me plot the cosine of x on this graph here, and then you'll see the relationship. So as we start plotting, this is the effective amplitude of x when drawn on a graph this way. In a circle, it doesn't have any amplitude, but on a graph, it does. And you can see, so this is the sine of y, and the cosine, x, is 90 degrees out of phase. So where does a 90 degrees come from? Then 90 degrees out of phase. So when we've got one whole radius, we've got no amplitude. When we come up just 90 degrees, we've got one whole amplitude and no radius and we've moved 90 degrees. So this is what 90 degrees look like. So this is one complete cycle. So now think of you the generators at a power station with the magnets passing the coils. You get maximum amplitude or maximum voltage induction as a magnet passes at sort of 12 o'clock. So this is one cycle. Europe, that would be 110 volts minus 110 across the two, 240, peak to peak, because we've got a peak there and a peak there. In America, that would obviously be plus 60, minus 60, so you know, 120, unless it's 100, you know, So that's, where, or, so that's obviously where peak to peak comes from as well in electricity, in electronics. And this positive phase is 180 degrees out of phase with the first phase, you know, with the first peak. So that's 180 degrees and 360. So that's now, this is 180 degree phase shift from that. And obviously with regards to electricity, we've got 50 of these in a second in the UK and America, 60 of these 
a second. All down to the Greeks and Pi and the circle. But with regards to this decimal number that I cannot get to 6.28, I've been chasing it for an hour. As I said earlier, this diameter makes up this diameter cuts this circle in two but this diameter is not part of the circle it does not make up the circumference so this is going from a rotating dial rotating gauge to now back to a circle and plotting out the sine and cosine on a graph so yes you can plot the cosine and you see the relationship between the cosine of x and the sine of y. And now we know why sine wave generators are called sine wave generators and not cosine of x generators. And now you might understand your peak peaks in uh, electronics, 180 degrees phase shift, because in the circle we're turning 180 degrees there's lots that can be explained just with this graphical representation. If only this existed when I was at school, the penny might have dropped a bit sooner, you know. Hopefully this has helped. The beginning to trigonometry, part two. Thank you for watching.